Happy Monday. It is June 29th. Yes, I'm Pat Sloan and you are here for the June challenges. Our 29th challenge in June is should I? So there's a lot of things that we could, <laughs> I don't even know what the list would be. The list would be massive that you could answer. Should I, should I do this? Should I have done that? You know, but we're going to do a should I have, should I do this question? And I will that's our challenge for the day is should I mark that's a lot of that's a really big question we focused on free motion quilting and walking foot quilting this month of June and you've noticed that I really don't address marking quilts and I've mentioned it here and there through here because I personally don't mark what I'm going to quilt uh, I just prefer not to because that's an two things one it's an added step and, and uh, of, of actually doing the marking. But the bigger added step for me is being sure that whatever I mark with will come out of every single fabric I use it on. Think about that. So do you want, you know, so that would mean if I wanted to mark something, if I was going to be super diligent and be sure if it came out, I would go to every piece of fabric that I was using in the quilt that I wanted to mark, that I would mark on, and I would test my marking device. But lots of people like to mark. It helps you. You can. It's easier to do certain quilting designs, uh, free motion, if you have something marked. So, what kind of marking tools are out there? There are ones that brush off, like a chalk. Like if you're using a very light chalk, it'll brush off. Uh, there are pounce pads, uh, which basically, if you had like a stencil, if you've never looked at quilting stencils, go out there. They're just like like painting stencils and then you would pounce chalk over top and then you basically quilt certain sections. Like you might do that for a fancy circle wreath so that you can get it very symmetrical. Um, then there are marking tools that uh, wash away. So there's a, a very old marking pen that's been around for eons and eons called a blue washout marker. And a lot of people use a blue washout marker. Uh, um, but a lot of people, have, you know, not a lot, but a lot of people have massive success with it. It washes out and it's fine. It is, um, you know, going to maybe sometimes not wash out. And that does happen to people. Occasionally somebody will have either accidentally heat set it uh, or it just is not coming out of a particular fabric that they used. Uh, so that's a risk you take, particularly if you don't test, if you don't mark and try to rinse the fabrics. There are other types of markers, um, like people will use a pencil. Now that's, that's a probably a, uh, one you will see like on antique quilts. Have you ever seen an antique quilt and you see pencil markings? Um, that's how they did a lot of marking. They often are difficult to get out. They really can be super difficult. So I would shy away from pencils personally. Um, there are also chalk pencils, so like the pounce chalk, you know, but they're chalk pencils. And if you test those, some of those will come off pretty nicely. Um, sometimes you might have to scrub them off. Uh, so those are the things to look at. Now there are um, pens out there that a lot of you use and I want to talk about those. So Greg is going to do a little demo and just show you. These are called Frixon pens and uh, they, they, really, they really don't necessarily come out of everything. They're not designed to come out of fabric. They are an iron away marker. So you can see he did some writing here. Um, let's see if you can just, there you can draw a line. So that's what it is. And it comes in a lot of different colors, like this is a red one. Yeah, so you could do like, he's doing some little dots and that actually might be a good thing to do where you don't want to have a heavy line just in case it doesn't all come out. Okay, you can come back up, Greg. So these, these markers I use to uh, draw like a line for half square triangles where it's not actually on the surface of the quilt. It's not a quilting line. It's done for sewing and it'd be like cut into the seam allowance or something like that and stay in the quilt. Um, what, how these go away is that you heat them with an iron and they disappear. Um, which, you know, I also have used them maybe for applique. If I was going to trace something with applique, I might use a Frixon. So you want to be really careful because occasionally those marks come back on people. Uh, you know, they rinse the quilt or they heat set it and they wash it and then later on the marks come back. So maybe if you want to use that, you use a super light color or a color that's very similar to your fabric. So if a little bit of it comes back, you don't see it. So these are all educational things. You decide what's good for you and what you can live with and what, how much testing you want. 
So that's my should I today. So what your challenge is, is tell me if you use any kind of marking tools, tell me what they are, how you use them. If you want to share a picture, that'd be awesome. You know, just share it over at my group, quote along with Pat Sloan at Facebook. Uh, if you have a question about the marking, you want to know what somebody was successful with, ask that question, people will answer. Um, so there you go. That is the should I for today. And if you've never used a marker and you have some, do some tests. That would be your challenge for today. Try them out. Get some sample pieces of fabric and just test them and then wash them or, or um, press with the iron, however the manufacturer tells you to get rid of it, and see what happens. Okay. Woohoo! That's the challenge for today. So now this is the 29th. Yes, so we finally start the Jolly Bar. The Jolly Bar sampler this guy i'm so excited this is going to be the cutest cutest quilt ever uh, this is the one i'm going to have minky on the back i decided uh, so your first one is we're going to do all of these blocks here these uh, sparrow track blocks and so i have them uh, this is the book there's the book and i have this set of blocks now i can't turn them yet. I don't have the mobility to turn them, but Greg is going to flip them over so you can just see all the ones that are going to go in my quilt. So these are aligned by my friend Corey Yoder of Moda, and it's called Canning Jars, her fabric line. And this is a, it was a Jolly Bar made with a fabric line, which is like half of a layer cake. It's a custom pre-cut made by the Fat Quarter Shop. So there's quite a few to do this, the, the top and bottom row, which I love that they give us this first. You know, in the sew along, I like to do the things that take the longest first because then you can catch up if you don't get them quite, all, quite done. But they're, they're so darling. Uh, and I love, I love Corey's fabric. It is some of my favorites out there. Okay, there we go. That, that is the first one. And la down below, I have a link to all of these things. So I have a link to a couple of the marking tools and I have a link to the my post because you need the Jolly Bar book to do this project. But every week during the sew along, I will give you of the Fat Quarter Shops directions for the week. They tell you like how many of those to make because sometimes you might even make just part of one of the quilts because these are just a few of the quilts within the book and we're taking blocks from them. Yes, so I have the link to the website so you can get that uh, down below, down below. And while you're there, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. That way you'll get the notices, you'll know when the new videos are out. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. Okay, the other a uh, post that I put out a day or so ago uh, was to tell you about the delay for the Out West Sew Along. You know, because of these, I can't really write patterns. And so I've, I'm going to have to shift and to sort of delay some things. So Out West is one of the ones I'm delaying. Uh, I'm just gonna hold this up a bit for a second and, and Greg, so I have like two fingers, I can hold a piece of paper, but I can't do much else. Uh, so there is the, the pattern, the uh, layout. So, so, Greg, why don't you um, yeah, why don't you just come down and look at the layout? I just brought one of the blocks over because, uh, cause I it had to have something pretty while we're talking. It's one of my favorite blocks from the quilt because I loved fussy cutting this fabric, uh, cause uh, these bouquets. So uh, that was so fun to do. Okay, so I gave you a suggestion. I have like three things you can do. One is you can just wait until I can write patterns again because I have four more blocks to give you. You have the layout, uh, so you can do that. You can just wait uh, and, and I'll keep you updated on what my mobility is. The other thing you could do is because there are already blocks in here, if you liked these, you could just repeat them. So you can make these, some of, there's five blocks actually. There's one, two, three, four, five. You can make four of those again and then just you know sprinkle them around however it looks nice in the quilt. Um, you, know, you could could do just these outer four again. Or you can go to my I Love to Make Quilts website and you could find four blocks that you like and make those if you don't want to wait. And that's if you don't want to wait. I figure it might be two months. We might have a two month, two month delay because we're only doing one block a month until I can start writing patterns again. Okay, Greg, that's, uh, that's good. So, and that's what's going on with 
the Out West, and I also put it on the project page, which you get to from I Love to Make Quilts. So you can always go to ilovetomakequilts.com, and you can always find what's going on with the different projects there. Uh, and I will put in on the project page an update uh, so you know. Okay, before we end, up on the uh, up on the wall behind me, I, wanted to, I know people will ask if you didn't see the video yesterday, that is the Christmas figs done in blue. So Greg will just give you a quick scan down there. And that quilt is I just having to hang up for a couple days because I think it's so pretty. And that is from the Christmas fig book. And I'll just, he can just tilt it just a little bit. That's the book cover. And the link is below. Okay, Greg, that's good for that. All right, my friends. <laughs> Whee! Hope uh, you're having a great time sewing here in June. I hope that your free motion quilting has been really zooming along uh, better than mine <laughs> so <laughs> okay all the links are below thank you for using them help support us we love you we appreciate you and i will see you online i love you so much Mwah! bye bye